having a little ride off to the mailbox today. I haven't seen any mail in there in uh, about a week, or at least I haven't gotten an alert anyway. They only alert me when I get boxes and packages. If I get an envelope or a postcard, uh, they don't alert me to that. So we're gonna go have a look in the mailbox and see what else there is. But I do know there's at least one package waiting for me. So we'll have a head over there. Uh, we're going during rush hour traffic. It's right now just after five o'clock. I just got done changing the gear oil right here on the fastback to see if that makes any difference at all on the uh, performance of this transmission and my difficulty with third gear. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm a skeptic. You know, I don't think it will, but um, if we get lucky, yeah, it might be what the problem was. Maybe it just needed some more lube. When I did pull the drain on it though, uh, it didn't seem like a whole lot came out to me. Not the usual three, I guess it's three quarts are supposed to go in there. Um, yeah, I think it's about three quarts. You're supposed to pull the side plug out and fill it through the uh, the side hole. And when the side hole starts overflowing is when you stop putting in oil. Well, all right, it went in the third gear okay there. That's a good thing. Yeah, maybe it'll be all right. I guess we'll see. It's one of those one in a hundred. I, I have difficulty putting it in third. Still an issue. Or at least it was as of uh, the last time I drove the Fastback here, which is earlier this week. Uh, I gotta say, the transmission is quieter than it was with more gear oil in it. Or fresh gear oil in it, I should say. But I think it was more. Oh, shit. I gotta go right over there. We're just gonna do this. <laughs> that was one time I didn't signal. Go that way. I'm just gonna keep going straight. Well, so far all the gears are uh, actually engaging much more smoothly than they had. I mean, it's not a tremendous difference, but there is a difference. Well, the subject on everybody's mind right now is the. Volkswagen bus, which I believe to be a 1967, and a lot of people are agreeing it's likely a 66 or a 67. A few people have pointed out some things, particularly the uh, lack of backup lights on the back of the uh, bus indicate that it could be a 66. The 67 was the first year for that, and I believe it was um, 68 on most Volkswagens. The Fastback here has separate uh, backup lights that are actually uh, in the bumper. And I think 68 was the last year for that. 69, they integrated it into the tail light. So there's a good possibility that bus just might be a 66. Uh, some people said, you know, go ahead and look in the engine compartment there off to the right for the VIN number. It should be stamped right around, not the engine tin itself, but the metal that goes around the engine tin off on the right. And yeah, I know that, but that whole section is rusted away. <laughs> it's not even there. So if there was a VIN number, it's gone. Uh, the VIN plate is still not in my possession. It's in Mary's possession. Uh, I still have to collect that from her. And uh, we'll check the number on that. Now, I don't think that VIN plate originally belonged to that vehicle. I think somebody probably rebuilt it at some point and uh, did some kind of switcheroo. So something just isn't right about that, that bus. Well, a lot of things aren't right about that bus. We're gonna work on making them right. Now, a lot of people have told me, hey, that bus is an absolute piece of shit. Why would you take on something like that? And for those of you that are saying that are the same people that probably haven't watched my videos about two years ago, that didn't see what I started out with when I started building Eleanor. And Eleanor, <laughs> Eleanor was a bad car. The whole body's coming off. The heater channel's gone, the floor pans are all rotted out. Yeah. Oh my god. This is just a, just a mess. So I... Eleanor was something that not a whole lot of people would get into. But I took that one on, knowing that I was going to build a custom because so much of it needed to be rebuilt or replaced, I didn't care. It didn't matter to me. And in the case of the bus, and Earl said it best, Earl pointed out what I didn't point out in my videos, and uh, that's that all the doors fit. When you close the doors, 
The seams around them are perfect. I don't think that'll be too big of a problem. The door doesn't like to stay closed, so it, oh, there it is, just closed. Well, here it is. All right, let's get this door closed back up. Well, the side door is actually closed properly and straight, I might add. Everything lines up. Everything fit on there quite well. In other words, the bus is square. It's not collapsing. It hasn't been crashed into. It hasn't uh, rusted to the point of, of, of collapse that Eleanor did. Eleanor actually broke in the middle, if you remember. Began to unbolt the steering column to get it out of the way so I could do some of the repairs behind it. And uh, the steering column is not supposed to be a structural part of the vehicle. It's supposed to be just for the steering. But once I unbolted it, the entire car collapsed. It broke in the middle. The doors fell and hit the ground. The roof flexed right in the middle. The entire dashboard kicked back. Uh, the A-pillars flexed beyond where they're supposed to be. Uh, they were rusted through entirely, so I had to replace a lot of pieces of metal. So in order to make this thing more manageable, uh, I just started cutting it up. Gregory the bus is uh, in much better shape by comparison, and as Earl said it best, is a much better candidate for restoration. Now if you haven't seen Earl's video, I'm going to put a link down in the video description. And you might want to stop this video right now, go watch Earl's video, and then come back to this video. And uh, well, before you come back, make sure you subscribe to him. And the reason why you need to subscribe is because Eleanor is going to leave my shop and it's going to go into Earl's shop sometime this summer. He and I were just talking about that yesterday on the phone. And um, you're going to see Eleanor in his shop. If you'd like to continue following the process of my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor, that wonderful little chop top that I built in my own garage all by myself out of washing machines, stoves, dryers, and just <laughs> various kitchen appliances and as few donor parts that I had to cut up as possible to build it. But anyway, he's going to do the, uh, the one over on, on the body. He's going to go over everything, make sure everything is straight, and then he's going to give it the, uh, the final coat of paint, which is still a big secret. We're still trying to figure out the color. When we get the color figured out, uh, nobody's going to even mention it until Earl reveals it. So if you want to see what color Eleanor is going to be, you're also going to need to be watching Earl's videos. So get over to Earl immediately. Uh, creative Car... Shit, I always say the wrong damn, damn name. Classic Car Creations. Um, there'll be a link in the video description. There'll be a link down in the video comments. I'll put some kind of link here on the screen to get you there just the same. Uh, you know what? Let's make it easy. Duckshit.net forward slash CCC. That will take you to Earl's channel. How's that? Doesn't get any easier than that. You don't have to remember that long URL to get to Earl's stuff duckshit.net forward slash ccc that will get you there once you're on earl's uh, youtube channel make sure you watch his video where he compared eleanor and gregory he actually watched a couple of my videos and discussed what he was looking at and and i thank him for this i mean he being a professional in the shop you know having done <laughs> far better work than i ever had and a lot more of it over the past 30 years he actually earns a living doing this and um just awesome work he, he restored um the Christine movie car number one. I mean, that's one of the, the biggest projects with the highest profile that uh, that he's worked on. He also has done one of the um, Herbie movie cars. And I don't know about the authenticity of that Herbie, but it belongs to Gail. I believe he's also the same one that organizes the uh, Herbie show that just happened uh, a few months ago. So Earl is going to be doing all my paint work and, and uh, I, I'm really excited about it. Top coat is not what I do. I mean, I can paint, I can get a reasonably looking good something, but it's not to the level of what he's got. And I, I'm looking to get show trophies with this car. It's not going to be a trailer queen. Eleanor is not a trailer queen. Eleanor is going to be driven and enjoyed. I built that car for me to drive. I made sure that my body, because I'm a big ass mofo at six foot three and 265 pounds currently, I'm a bit fat for my taste, but I'm going to uh, start working on that. In fact, I already have started working on it. I haven't seen any weight change yet, but that's usually what happens. My weight will stay stable for a very long period of time. But anyway, I built that car so I can fit in it. I built that car so I can drive it. I built that car so that I'm comfortable with it and that I have a one of a kind unique car. And I know that if I was going to build something like that, uh, and I knew I was going to build a Chop Top Beetle eventually, but if I was going to build another one, and you know, I got a car that was in some really, really good shape, everybody would have been pissed off at me for cutting up a good car. 
And I, I can't even look at myself in the mirror in the morning when I'm brushing my teeth if I were to destroy something like that. That doesn't make sense to me. And I've got a lot of, of really good offers for other cars, other Beetles that came along that had a minimal to no rust, and I knew what I was going to do. I was going to cut it up, and I just could not bring myself to do it. Uh, my 73 Beetle was one of those cars that I was going to cut up. My 65 Beetle also, and, and they were just too good of a candidate to, uh, to start hacking and whacking. Eleanor? Eleanor had so much missing and so much broken already that <laughs> it needed to be cut on its own. So I didn't have an issue with that. Man, this traffic rush hour, they're backed up for a mile. Good God. And this is why I make this turn over here to avoid all that. Man, that shift, shifting does work a whole lot better than it did. I thought it was just a little better, but no, I guess the gear oil's working its way into everything. I guess I just might have either had a unusually low gear oil or uh, <laughs> just really dirty you know gritty or something I don't know but usually on a swing axle Volkswagen if your gear oil starts getting low one of the first things that happens is your wheel bearings go because they are lubricated by the transmission oil they go down through the long shafts uh, long axle shafts and they lubricate the bearings on the ends the IRS beetles are actually packed grease and if your oil's too low, it tends to not reach the ends of the, um, the tubes. Also, if you're lowered, the tubes tend to be angled upwards, which means the oil is not going to go up, you know, against gravity to get up there. Boy, that van in front of me stinks like a sulfur fart. Disgusting. <laughs> it's really bad. Ever since I've been behind him, I've been smelling it. Shit. Well, anyway, I'm really excited about Gregory, and I'm really excited to start rebuilding that bus. Um, I have not put a budget aside for it yet. I also haven't started to really tear into it to see what kind of repairs I'm going to have to do. I already know all four corners need work, and that's standard on pretty much any Volkswagen. Usually the corners go, and uh, he's going to be just sitting there. He a left-hand turn signal, and he's got the opportunity to go, and he doesn't go. All right, here comes third. No problem. Went right in. Okay. Good to go. Good to go. Anyway, I have not set a budget aside for Gregory yet. Uh, I don't want to start spending a lot of money on that vehicle until, until I know exactly how much it's going to cost me to finish up Eleanor. Uh, a lot of people have just jumped all over my shit about, hey, when are you going to finish Eleanor? You got this bus now. Are you going to forget about Eleanor entirely? And I mean, these are really annoying questions because apparently people think I'm either dumb or I'm a quitter. <laughs> and I'm neither. Absolutely neither. The only time I've ever diverted from a project is when I came up with a better idea. It's not, not ever that I threw something away, like this CR500 and the SV650 frame. I decided I wanted something smaller and lighter, so I went into a CR250 frame instead of an SV650. And the bike went eight inches shorter than it used to be, and it weighed about 100 pounds less. That's why I built a smaller bike. Not because I quit, not because I had problems with it. I put it on the back burner, had a better idea, and then I took it back apart and rebuilt it again. And I'll get to the CR500 someday. I don't know when the hell I'm ever gonna get around to that. I got so much ahead of it right now. It's not high on the priority list, it really isn't. I don't have any friends that ride motorcycles with me anymore. I'm all by myself. Everybody got married and had kids, you wait your ass. Everybody got married and had kids and uh, their wives won't let them ride their bikes anymore because they're afraid they're going to get splattered. And then you got me, <laughs> single, no kids, with ducks. Is that your poop? That's right. I go out and I have a good time. Yeah, I'm thinking back to, uh, I guess it was about two years ago when I brought Eleanor home. No, maybe it wasn't two years ago. It was three years ago I brought Eleanor home. Um, three years ago when I brought that beetle home, I was dating a woman, and this is how Eleanor actually earned her name. Um, I was dating a woman, and she hated the car. Uh, she encouraged me to get it, told me if it's really what I wanted and what I really needed to do, and as far as what I really wanted to get into, I, I should get it. But she didn't really know what I was getting into until I brought it home. And when I put it in the driveway, I, I told her, listen, I, I got to take some time away from seeing you because she wanted me every friggin minute of the day including when I was at work 
And if you're competing with my job and my well-being, you're obviously a problem. And I knew that, and it was, it was coming to that point of a discussion. But it actually never even really got to that point. Because I told her, um, I gotta work on this car. I gotta get this thing out of my driveway. It's, it's a 1956 oval windowed Beetle. They're very rare, and either one of two things, maybe even three things, is gonna happen. The county code enforcement's gonna come along and they're gonna issue me a citation for having a rusty old dead car in my driveway that's falling apart. That's the first thing that's gonna happen. Two houses down from me is Mr. Jackson. He's a 70-year-old grumpy old man that's been living in the neighborhood since it was uh, originally built. He's been in that same house. He's watched everybody in the neighborhood turn over the houses multiple times, new neighbors. And uh, while he and I get along, I discovered that he'll call the cops on anybody for anything. So he doesn't play favorites. He just doesn't. I have to get the thing out of the driveway. The second thing that might happen is code enforcement has also been known to just take a car. And some people, you know, say, oh, no, no, that doesn't happen. It happened to my neighbor on the other side. He had a Jaguar in his driveway that was parked there for five years. Uh, the last year it was there, he took the plate off of it. He had a plate on it all those years, but it, I don't think it was currently registered, but he took the plate off of it. One day I'm coming home from work, code enforcement was there, and so was the tow truck. And they took his Jag out of his driveway. Uh, of course, he hadn't driven it in five years. I don't think he was going to miss it any, but uh, they, they actually took it. Just, they took it away. So she told me, why do you need to go work on that car? It's a piece of junk. Nobody's going to take that piece of junk out of your driveway. You should be more worried about somebody taking your 350Z than that piece of junk. And, and I let her know, um, the 350Z isn't as theftable. They're not as popular. It's certainly not worth as much money. And uh, as far as parts and salvage on it, it's not a, you know, a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla. There's not millions of these things on the road that people are going to need parts for because they're constantly crashing the things up. So anyway, she didn't like that idea too much. So one of those days that I was actually working on Eleanor in the driveway, I had a breakfast burrito I was making, and in between video cuts, I choked on it. And I had a near-death experience. I actually lost consciousness briefly, very briefly. Everything turned purple and closed around me. And it was just a feeling of cold. And when I hit the ground, boom, that impact caused the burrito and all the sriracha sauce that was in my throat and burned the shit out of me the rest of the day um, to shoot out. And I never felt air so cold come into my lungs before. It actually felt cold. And it wasn't a cold morning. I mean, it was, I think, April, May here in Florida. It's probably about 75, almost 80 degrees. Humidity was starting to come up. The air conditioner was already running, just to give you a little bit of an idea there. Anyway, I, I nearly died. I called her. She was an asshole about the whole situation because she'd rather be with me than me work on my car. I knew right then and there that was the end of that. And that same day I broke up with her. Boom! If I brought home Gregory sometime when I was together with her, she probably would have also had a fit because it would have been something else competing with her and her time. And she would have called it a piece of junk, like so many other of my YouTubers have. Oh my God, you're bringing home these pieces of junk. Yeah, well, you know what? I can fix these pieces of junk. Why would you put so much money into that piece of crap? Well, here's why. Here's why. You ready for this? I'm looking on the Samba this week, and I noticed that on the Samba, the Samba, or however you want to say it, I'm from a different part of the country, so I will say Samba. And uh, I discovered that buses like mine without a title, just as much rust, and even some crash damage. In fact, everyone that I looked at had crash damage. Asking prices were between $5,000 and $12,000. You heard that right. $5,000 to $12,000. Holy f***ing shit. <laughs> that's why I'm rebuilding that bus. Because I'm not ready to go out and buy a bus that's in better shape that's gonna cost more than that. Go f*** yourself. They're just not worth that to me. But they are worth that to somebody else. And while I do plan on building Gregory and keeping him, there's such a marketable and reasonable value that that vehicle has uh, to be resold in the future and make a lot of money doing it. So let's say I do put that five or six thousand or even maybe even ten thousand dollars into it. Down the road when it's freshly painted and the thing is looking really nice, I can get a lot more money than that for it. And I think, you know, another ten years from now it might be a thirty or forty thousand dollar bus. 
<laughs> anyway, we're at my mailbox, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, well, we are back, so let's go ahead and give an official introduction. Uh, welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> Anyways, I picked up two boxes today uh, from the mailbox. I got one from Macon, Georgia, and another one from Australia. So as soon as we arrive home, we're going to bust open these boxes and find out exactly what we've got in them. I'm sure it's going to be something exciting. Um, I don't even know if it's stuff for Skeeter's birthday. It might be. Well, they're both addressed to me, but we'll have Skeeter in the video anyway. But continuing on from the previous discussion, which, by the way, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. You get updates every time I upload a new video. Check out duckshit.net if you are interested in all of my different social media links. I've got an Instagram. I've got multiple Facebook links. Did you know Skeeter has a Facebook? Did you know Delmont has a Facebook? That's right. Delmont the idiot has a Facebook. <laughs> so anyways, check some of those things out. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, the whole deal. Follow, like, comment, uh, all those different buttons. Everybody calls it something different. You know the drill. Hit them up. I really appreciate it. You can see some of the other things that I get into. Sometimes some of my Volkswagen stuff I don't share on YouTube, and it appears on Instagram instead. You'll never get to see it if you're not a follower. <laughs> all right. And away we go. Changing out that gearbox oil was definitely the right thing to do. This car needed it bad, something really bad. So anyways, on the subject of Gregory, between five to $12,000 for a panel bus in the same condition as Gregory, and some of them were even crashed up too, so they're in worse shape than Gregory. I don't even know that, um. I would even ask that price. To me, they're not worth that much. But apparently to others, they are. And they're becoming more valuable as they're getting more and more scarce. Uh, geez, there was only one other one in town that I had seen for a reasonable price, and I kicked myself for not getting this. This was actually on sale about five, six years ago. They wanted $500 for it. I went and stuck my head under it, and I, and I chose not to buy it because the frame was rusted through. It, uh, all the doors on it opened and closed properly and they were all straight, but the frame was rusted through. Now, looking back at that and my um, fact that I was way overwhelmed by that, uh, I was actually even intimidated by it. I opted out of the buying entirely. I just, I, I couldn't do it. It was just too much. I didn't want to get into that. But nowadays, that doesn't scare me at all and I kick myself for not bringing that bus home. Because if I brought that bus home and I just let it sit in my yard under a tarp for five years, I could be asking like five grand for it right now. And, and I don't think that's a fair price. Really, I don't. But there's somebody out there that will probably pay it. And I could have made a small fortune. Either that, or it would have been a hell of a lot of parts for Gregory. And then I could have sold off what was left. And that would have funded the rest of the project for Gregory. Well, anyway, shooting off the hip, I added up some figures as to what these parts are going to cost. Just figuring out some of the panels that need to be replaced. Not everything needs to be replaced. And not everything needs to be repaired. But a lot of the panels that are on there, I actually can fix. But some of the things that are molded a certain way, like the lower corners on the back of the bus, uh, those, they're rounded in such a way that I don't even want to try to put that on the English wheel and remake new ones. I don't think they'd ever look quite right. So I'd rather get ones that are stamped properly. The, um floor for the front section that's underneath the driver and the passenger up front. That's another one that has all kinds of stamping in it. There's all kinds of holes cut into it. It has a certain shape. I'm not even going to try to rebuild that. Somebody else did. It's perfectly flat and it's already rusted and just looks like crap. So I'm going to gut that out of there and put a brand new proper floor in there. So I mean those are some things that I'm just not going to be able to patch. The roof, however, the roof. 
The roof is on fire. Ah, that long rusty edge along the passenger side. That I can probably fix. Will I fix it though? I don't know. They actually make a patch panel for that too. That's preformed. So all I have to do is lay the patch panel over it, clamp it together, and then cut along the edges <laughs> and then weld it in and be done with it. So, I mean, there are options as far as that's concerned too. Uh, I do plan on doing a little bit of minor customization to this bus because it is my bus and the fact that uh, I don't like things to look like everybody else's, I am going to do some modifications to it. So everything is not going to be as original OEM perfect to the factory. I mean, look at Eleanor. I mean, Eleanor, I reached, I really reached. I mean, I went so far out as to make that car look like it was unlike anybody else's Beetle. But at the same time, I kept all the factory stuff on it to make it look like the Volkswagen did build this car. And then it was a factory or coach built Volkswagen. And rather than something that somebody modified in their uh, backyard in Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> I'm gonna turn over here. Well, he's going down that way. I'll get the next one. Wow, even my downshifts are a lot smoother than they were before. Yeah, uh, gear oil was definitely the key. Uh, if I have any other transmission problems, I'm gonna say the transmission is probably more seriously worn than I would have thought, but uh, that gear oil really <laughs> really made a hell of a difference today. All right, here comes another speed bump. We do the duck man maneuver. This is how we get around speed bumps here. Bloop, done. I usually don't even hit the brakes when I come up to them. I just go right around them. Bloop, just like that. I'm actually going a little over the speed limit. It's 25 back here, and I'm doing uh, 33 indicated, which means I'm probably about five over. This thing does tend to read a little higher than it actually is going. Oh man, I can't wait to bust these boxes open. I'm quite curious what they are. I think I know what the one from Australia is. I recognize the name on it. to skip a gear like I do when I'm in the Z. The Z having six speeds, the gears are so close together that I will very often go one, two, four, skip third entirely. I just tried to do one, two, four in here and four didn't want to go in too easy. It wasn't ready yet. And I went in the third, no problem. Oh, it's supposed to rain tonight and into tomorrow. Instead, we have a lot of high humidity and it clouded up really bad, but it's starting to clear again. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to be trying to make space for uh, Gregory, because Gregory is sitting where that uh, beetle used to be. And the beetle's still there. I just ended up putting it away in the far corner of the yard where it's not gonna bother me until that owner decides to come for it. I've been a nice guy and I haven't been charging him storage or putting a mechanics lien or anything on it for the, the thing sitting there. But he does need to come get it. So I'll try hitting him up again this week. Uh, both he and A-Bomb, I sent him text messages and I don't get replies back. I don't know if, uh, if they're even receiving them at all. I should just call these guys. I try not to bother them. I try not to bother anybody really. I live in my own little world. I do my own thing. And I don't like my own phone ringing. When people call me, it's just obnoxious as shit. Because they're not calling to spend money, they're calling just you know, to get a bunch of free, free questions answered for computers. Get off my back. Get out of here. I should just start telling them, oh, question? Hey, no problem. $25. Get your credit card out. Well, what? What? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm in here. It's business. This is business. 
you're calling me, you're taking my time away from everything else, so you're gonna start, you know, paying me. 25 bucks for a question. I don't think that's unreasonable, actually. 25 bucks is, uh, pretty cheap for a consultation. And you can keep me on the phone for a little while. If it starts to get too long, you know, I'm gonna whack you for another 25 bucks again. But I guess I gotta put it into the, uh, black and white as to how many minutes you get for a $25 phone call. <laughs> it's, uh, internet company I used to work for. They did web hosting. And all phone support for everybody was free. But if you wanted a manager to call you back, we will call you immediately within, I think it's 15 or 20 or 30 minutes or something of when you made this purchase. But online, you make a $50 purchase for a manager's immediate phone call. In other words, you don't wait on hold and you go right up to the top tier of support. And it was a really popular thing. People would pay 50 bucks just to talk to somebody that actually really knows what they're talking about and is able to actually do something rather than working their way up through the tiers. I mean, you could, just like anybody else, get regular tech support. It was included in your package, but if you wanted something additional, and then you would pay additional for it. So I don't think it's too unreasonable to actually ask something like that. So maybe that's what we'll start doing. You got a phone call? No problem. $25 for questions. I hope I make this green light. Oh, it looks like I got lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yellow. Fuck you, light. <laughs> One thing I've got to start learning to do uh, when, of course, I get them on the road is driving Gregory. I have very, very little experience driving a bus. I did have a bay window bus for a couple years. And uh, really, I only drove it around the neighborhood because it was uh, neither titled in my name nor insured nor registered. So once in a while, I would take it out on the road and drive. But because I tend to go around corners kind of quick, and, and you know, swerve between lanes kind of quickly. I don't think it'll be a good idea to be doing that on a bus because buses are known to roll over. And uh, well, I really don't want to roll over. Rolling over doesn't sound like a good idea. Everybody's waving at me again. Everybody loves this car. Camaro. <laughs> Never been a fan of the catfish Camaros. He uh, was waving at me and revving his engine and shit. I don't know how well you could have heard it on the camera. It was a little far away from me, but making a scene and then when I looked he waved and smiled. <laughs> Everybody loves old Volkswagens. so far so good um, as far as third gear shifting is concerned the only problem I had with third gear shifting since I started this uh, well actually it was before I started the video right when I first started to go down my, my street I had trouble putting into third once and only that one time and the shifter still felt kind of stiff uh, by comparison to how it feels now but I think once the, all that oil worked itself through the gears and loosened everything up this thing feels really nice it feels really nice right now I mean, even just shifting it here while I'm sitting idle, all the gears are just much easier to put into place. Camaro. <laughs> I 
I don't know why the hell he ever built a Camaro. It looked like a catfish. Of course, my friend Rick buys one. Why'd you buy that car, Rick? Oh, I thought it was really cool. And why'd you get the V6, Rick? Oh, because I wanted to save gas. Who buys a Camaro to save gas? <laughs> Rick does. That's who. <laughs> Rick is an interesting bird. He's about uh, he's about 12 years older than I am. So when I was 18 years old, he was 30. We used to go to these car shows together all the time. I don't know, we had an awful lot in common as far as computer programming and stuff like that. But nowadays, it's hard to imagine it, that Rick is in his 50s. <laughs> And he's a little short guy. He's probably all about five foot two. And if you tell him he's five foot two, he goes, I'm not five foot two. Well, how tall are you? Five foot three. So, yeah, Rick, you're real big. <laughs> so seeing the two of us together was always a riot. He's a whole foot shorter than I am. All right, well, we're signing off. We'll be back in the workshop. Opening up mail. Thanks for watching. Poor Skeeter crashed yourself. Yeah, you crashed yourself before we started recording video. You did. Started flapping her wings and stuff and went crazy and flipped herself out of the bin and went down behind the counter. Thankfully, I got her before she fell down behind it completely. She was on the windowsill over there. All right. Well, welcome back. Yeah, that's right. Look at you. We're ready to open up some boxes. And it might even be for you. We just don't know until we open it. We just don't know. One of them is coming all the way from Australia. We are going to open up this one on Skeeter the Duck's channel for sure. Skeeter the Duck mail call, that's right. This is the last of your birthday presents. Yes, it is. You excited? Yeah, you excited? Well, we're going to open that one up next. First, let's open up this one. This one is addressed to me. And if it is for you, your video is going on your channel. <laughs> this one comes all the way from Macon, Georgia, from somebody named, well, it could be a company or a somebody. Lyconis Wolf. I don't recognize the name. Let's go ahead and bust it open and see just what we got. Kind of lightweight, whatever it is. It feels like it could be fluffy, or at least wrapped in something fluffy. We got here, we got bubbly bubblies. We got, oh wow. Oh wow, Skeeter, check this out. I think I know who this is. Um, is there a note in here? There is. Other side man. Okay. Let's see. Yo, I'm sending you these mirrors so you cannot have the following... the falling off one. Ha! I hope these work for you. Conus eats kimchi! I know exactly who it is. Now I understand the name Lyconus. Like that's how he gets uh, Conus. Ha, ah, plus one that is cancerous, so I guess one of these mirrors has some rust on it. Looks like uh, that's what we're seeing in here. Okay, let's see what we got here, Skeeter. Looks like we got us uh, a side view mirror, which looks like it's going to be a good fix for Ruby. Ruby's mirror fell apart, and I tried to, uh, tried to use a special glue to hold it back together, and it really didn't do the trick. And I think this one will fit. It's not... Not going to be the right mirror because this looks like it's a beetle mirror, but it will be functional. There we go. Look at that, Skeeter. Look at that. See? Yeah, it's a mirror. There we go. Can use that for the side view on the driver's side. I bet you he came off of a red beetle. <laughs> it looks like he had a little bit of red overspray. And this one here. Well, he did a good job wrapping this stuff up, that's for sure. This one is a... <laughs> it's doing exactly what mine did. <laughs> the plastic gets a little brittle and it starts to flake apart. But uh, this is a rearview mirror. What's uh, really good on it, though, is that it has a white stem. And the white stem is in better shape than mine is. Now, I don't know if this latch is in the same way as mine. I'm going to have to look. But this is certainly a lot easier to see. Oh, what was that noise? Did you do that? Did you make that noise? <laughs> Look at this, we got dirty dust everywhere here. That's not mouse shit like the last package had in it. Throw this all back in here. This is, uh, this is great. 
Of course, we were just in the uh, Fastback and I had no side view mirror on it. But I'm used not to look in it anyway because when I open up the vent window, you can't see through it anyway from where I sit. Because the window being, you know, turned like this, it's just it blocks so much of the mirror it becomes useless. This is going to help tremendously. Thank you again. Really, I appreciate it. I'd love to know how to be able to get this glass out of these things. Because I have a good piece of glass and I can actually uh, rebuild a mirror if I know how to do that. Anybody have any ideas how to get the glass out? I'm thinking maybe heat it. It might be held in by some kind of heat sensitive glue. You don't want to start prying things because, well, you don't pry glass. You know what happens when you pry glass. All right. We got us some parts to put in. No, uh, not Eleanor. <laughs> we got parts to put Ruby back together. Let's go ahead and throw some of this crumbs in here. Thank you very much there, Konus Eats Kimchi. Really appreciate there, buddy. Really, I do. Yeah. And this is Skeeter the Duck's letter. We're going to open this up over on Skeeter the Duck's channel. So if you want to see what it is, and I already know what it is, uh, this powder from this mirror everywhere here. <laughs> I kind of have an idea as to what it is. I know exactly who it came from. So check out Ski to the Duck's channel. It's uh, YouTube forward slash Ski to the Duck. That's right, it's your YouTube channel. <laughs> and we're going to continue this video over there. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, pluck the dingle belly, check out duckshit.net for all my other social media links. And, uh, well, we hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching.